Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Cookies. We have a fantastic show planned for you today. Um, Coffee and Cookies, if you're new to the show, it is about life, leadership, positivity, tangents, laughter, coffee, and cookies. So make sure you grab some, join us, tune in, and we're going to get started. So today's show is sponsored by Rookie.io. Everything from reputation management, lead generation, automation, funnels, anything you need to help complete your digital marketing foundation, get your time back with Rookie.io. Good morning, Nick. Good morning, Lindsay. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. You're fantastic. It's so yes. funny. So welcome, audience. Thank you guys for joining us on Facebook and YouTube. Thank This is going to just be an amazing show. We have a guest in the room. Yeah, we do. But... I was, I, I was telling Lindsay, is like, you know, sometimes you, you get here, you get into the office, right? And you're like kind of groggy. Mm -hmm. And then, and then you're watching the time click, 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 click. And it's like, it's about to show, oh, show time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> get the coffee, get the, get the coffee, get the cameras, get the mic set up, get da -da 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 -da. everything said and rolling. So, but, but, but we, we have a guest in the house yes, we and do. my face already hurts from laughing so much. <laughs> so go ahead, Lindsay. We are so excited to have back half of the couple that was here before, but I, in my opinion, the better half, just, you know, girls got to stick together. So please welcome Taylor Aponte. Hi. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Thank you for having me back. I'm, yeah, so, right. I'm so glad she's back. Yeah, we love Taylor. <laughs> we, we, we do. We do. It's, 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 to, to say we wouldn't would be lying to everyone, including ourselves. I mean, really. Right? Mm hmm We just... So let's just not do it. No, no lying. Taylor, Positivity. what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Yes, it's what is that? It's a pink drink. It's a pink drink. What Actually, is a pink drink? Um, so I get it when my stomach hurts and I still need caffeine. Um, <laughs> that has caffeine in it? Green tea caffeine, not coffee. Oh, okay. Uh, so it has green tea, caffeine, coconut, milk, ice, and strawberries. Huh. Nice. Because I, I got your order of pink drink and I'm like, there's like four pink drinks at Starbucks. Like, what is it? What is it? But, but, but there's really a drink called pink drink. Like when you type it into the app, <laughs> it's the one that shows up. Yes. It didn't give me any I options. No there idea. was one option. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be interesting. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> Good morning, dad. Thank you for joining us. So my dad was, uh, in, was up, was up here up North yesterday. Mm -hmm. and he stopped by the house while, while I was working. And, uh, my dad knows how to, really, really make sure the girls know that they're special. He shows up with Oreos and chocolate milk. Well, I miss that True part. Grandpa. Man, I miss that part of his visit. Yes. I'm so sad. Yes. So <laughs> Oreos and chocolate milk. I go, cause, so so we have Oreos and chocolate milk. So this morning, Lennon's like, Dad, I don't want, I don't want my donuts. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm thinking my daughter's about to make a, like a healthy decision. I want Oreos. Oreos for breakfast. What Dad, my daughter wanted Oreos for breakfast. So I go to open up the little package of Oreos. These Oreos have not even been in the house a full 12 hours. Mm -hmm. There's there's three rows normally in a package. This was there's a brand new package. There's one row left. There's huh. a brand it's a new package. Is it a whole row? <laughs> that's, that's good. For 12 hours? That's what would have been How snuck many? last night. <laughs> <laughs> but you have a few people in your house, right? It's not we, just we, like we do, but you, your daughter, and your wife. Like, there's a few of you. Yes, and 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 we and we have some guests staying with us right now, right, Ruby? If you're See? watching, thank you for joining. Thank you for being at the Gart side Casa this week. So, but Taylor, t tell us a story about your kids and why and why this why you said these cookies would have been snunk. Um, because my kids love to steal food out of the pantry in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night? <laughs> yes. I don't know what it is about the middle of the night. They are fed. Don't come for me in the comments. They are fed <laughs> don't seven, come times, <laughs> seven times a day. Yes, seven. Seven times a day. <laughs> they have two breakfasts, and now they're like, when's second dinner? Like, are you paying for it? Are you making it? Are you cleaning it up? <laughs> I would love second dinner. <laughs> Are you cleaning it up? That's like, I love that. I would, I would make that stipulation. You want second dinner? You do the dishes. That's you not cook their issue. It. You cook it and you do the dishes. I'll do one meal. You do the other meal. 
They like doing the dishes right now. They don't oh. do it. They don't do it right. Ah, the way I like it done. <laughs> yeah, but they do it. That's a challenge. <laughs> That's yes. literally Amber mm-hmm. and I. Nick will help to do the dishes, but he won't do it right. So now I just clean it and I just leave it because no matter how often I put it in the dishwasher and try to do it Amber's way, she always goes back and redoes it. So I have a trick for this. It's Tetris. No, no. Again, everything's spaced out right. There's always space for the water to get like I'm I'm like actively trying to do this Uh and I'll hear it. I'll walk away and I'll hear her crack open the dishwasher and I'll hear dishes all get moved around like. I just take a picture the next time she loads it for yourself. (gasps) We were talking about this at a ladies event. That's a great idea. For a new mom. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of how you like everything in your house done so that it's no longer just your responsibility. Mm -hmm. Someone can come help you. You can teach your kids. Your spouse can do it the right way. So it's not like double doing it. So Taylor, you should hold on, hold on. Like, 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 like Taylor's done dishes and put it up for your kids. So they know how to do the dishes. Like, like, <laughs> the like, right way. like, that's it. Like we're, we're not even, we're only six minutes into it. And Taylor's like, here's amazing gold. <laughs> Boom. Like, but seriously, like take pictures. Everyone has a printer or you go to whatever little local print shop is near you. You take pictures, you have it laminated, you put it on the wall. Boom. There's no excuses. Mm-hmm. Right. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Rosalie. Thank you guys for joining us today. Man. So good. Right. So, so hey, good. I was watching yesterday's episode and Thomas, I might naturally, owe you naturally. <laughs> <laughs> I love hearing my own voice. <laughs> oh, my God. That is so arrogant. <laughs> Hmm. and thomas i might owe you an apology bro i completely agree with you spanking your kids when when it gets to that point i completely agree they just i I heard myself talking and i want to make sure that you and i are on the same page yes you spank your kids you explain them what they did wrong and we move forward Mm -hmm. so i just i I, when i was listening to myself yesterday i was like it kind of sounded like i wasn't agreeing with thomas so i want to make sure i set the record straight Okay, so there we go. Done. Spank your kids. That's what I heard. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to know what? It's, here we go. You ready for this? The kids that I have to wind up coaching the most are the kids where the parents do not spank their kids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, can, can you do that one more time? That was a... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's truth. Yeah. Listen, the adults that we run around with sometimes today are the you results wish you could... of not getting spanked. Like you, you could... should have been afraid of whatever was in your parents' hand. I have memories. We used to go to this Mexican restaurant, and Dad, I don't remember the name of it, but you would raise a little flag, and they would bring you uh, sopapillas. Right. Okay. It was. Uh, it was like. Oh man, it was, it, be, it began with a P dad. If you remember this restaurant, cause you used to take us there like almost every day after church, every Sunday after church. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and you, you would, you would sit at your little table and you'd raise it was, it was a buffet style Mexican, but you would raise a little flag and that meant you were ready for dessert Ooh. and they would bring you some pias with, with the, with the honey and whatnot. But there was this, there was this thing that they used to, to, um, Oh, ponchos. That's it, dad. So, so, my dad got this. It was a wood. It was a flat wooden spoon with a little handle. We thought it was the coolest thing, until we realized that that was going to be used on our butts. And then, and then, <laughs> I don't ever it. Did it have a hole through it so it didn't have any resistance? No, it, it did. No, <laughs> no, no. It had a resistance. It had a resistance. But you want to know what? We knew. We knew when that came out. <laughs> Not, you messed up. You messed up bad. Mm. You'd have the talk. And you, my dad was good about it. Like, but he would talk to us before he would spank us. Mm. That's key. Right? Like, you're going to get a spanking because you did this. And then came the warning. Please do not try to put your hands in the way. Or move. Or move. And that was it. That was it. Like, you knew. You knew. It, you want to know what? But it, it set the expectation moving forward. Like you started to think, mm, that wooden paddle. I, I remember, I remember which drawer it lived in. I know the sound of that drawer opening up. Mm-hmm. What else lived in that drawer? Like how often was that drawer opened up and everybody was like, <gasps> <laughs> uh, there, 
honestly, I just I remember it being the third drawer in. Mm-hmm. What else was that? Whatever else was in there, I don't remember because it wasn't that important. Hers hung on the wall. <gasps> it was Granny's spoon. That thing was huge. <laughs> that thing was so big. Um, I feel like the actual spoon part was as big as this mic, in fact. And it had the little point. That thing hung on the wall. And she would start reaching for it. We're like, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. I may not know what I'm saying I'm sorry for, but I'm sorry. Like, we had fear of our parents. Oh, man. Some of us in healthy ways, but healthy ways in the sense that, like, you're not going to say some of the things kids say to their parents nowadays. Oh, my goodness. I, yes. Like, you got. we need to move topics because I'm having all these flashbacks of being a teacher. <laughs> and I, <laughs> we need to move no, forward. <laughs> no, no, no. But, 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 but that's it, though. Parenting is not there. It's not supposed to be you just trying to be your, 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 your best friend to your kid. Mm-hmm. You are there to be the, the parent, which means that you love the child, but you love that child with discipline. And sometimes mm-hmm. you just speaking to your kid does not work. Sometimes the fear has to be introduced to get your kid to be a... Re- a respectful kid, an honorable kid, okay? And don't 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 sit here and be like, oh, well, my kid is perfect. Your kid not perfect. You not perfect. You're uh, not you, perfect. Right? Is your kid named Jesus? <laughs> so 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 uh, let, let, there let, are some kids let's go back Jesus, to so, right. I mean. They're not perfect. <laughs> That's true. Let's go back to uh so Bluey, right? The the episode we watched last night was Bluey, um, was library. Are mm. you familiar with this episode of Bluey called Library? Okay, so on the drive in, <laughs> on the drive in, Muffin's dad tells her she's the most special child in the mm-hmm. world. So she just turns into this little not nice kid. Diva. Mm-hmm. For the major- diva. For mm-hmm. the majority of the episode. And finally, the other kids are like, we don't want to play with Muffin. And, th- and the dad goes, well, why? And well, Muffin says that she's the most special kid in the world. She can do whatever she wants. So the dad actually goes, oh, that's on me. He takes ownership. He goes, he talks to me. He goes, Muffin, you're the most child. You're the, you're the most special child in the world to me and your mother. You're not the most special child in the world to everyone else. And Muffin's like, oh, I get that. And, and, and they move on, right? And now, now and Muffin runs out. She goes, I'm not special anymore. And they all, like, and rejoice. They all start it's playing, so right? <laughs> they all get excited. But how often do we teach our kids that opposite? You're, my kids are special to me, but they're not special to everyone else. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to get, and you want to, when they grow up, they're not going to get the special treatment that they think they deserve because they're my daughters. Because they get cookies for breakfast. <laughs> That's honestly one of the things that Gabe and I have learned in um, coaching. So our coaching has been a lot uh, parent oriented. Um, but we used to, especially Gabe, would talk about how our middle, Grace, is like the princess. So much so that she literally thought the castle that comes on at the beginning of Disney movies was hers. <gasps> like, legitimately. And she would get very upset. And so she, recently, she started learning the same lesson. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, you are all these amazing things. And mommy and daddy think the world of you but you still have to be kind. Mm-hmm. So changing how we affirm her, not like you're a princess. Mm-hmm. You are amazing. You are beautiful. You are smart. You have so much to give and like focusing on what her talents are mm-hmm. as opposed to labeling her as whatever culture considers a princess. Cause she'll live up to that as it changes. If oh, that's what we continue to affirm in her hmm. and we don't want some of those qualities. They go against our core values. Go that back was to the good. core values. Well, no, but I mean, if, if, did, did you hear that? Did you hear that? The, the definition of a princess is right now being defined by Disney. Mm-hmm. And who knows how that's going to change? So what you've done is you've brought that back into your own household core values. And now that's the benchmark that and, and those are those are the words that you're speaking over your daughter. That was so smart. I mean, I know you know that, but I'm gonna still. I'm going to have to reevaluate calling my daughter Angel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an angel mommy. You can't tell me what you to do. You are an angel, yeah. <laughs> God said I'm an angel. That means I get to tell you yeah. what to do now. <laughs> no, 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 no. That means you protect. 
So the coach yeah. had her name, <laughs> Brittany Lashua had said, if it's in your sphere, it's in your power to author like control, mm -hmm. not in a controlling way that we would think of, um, like manipulative. But if it's in your sphere, it's your responsibility and you get to do something about it. And if you choose not to, it's just the same as choosing something bad. I love the word. I, I love the word that you just used. You get to. That's something that we're actually working on in my household was it's not that we're requiring you. You don't have to. No, you get to. Mm -hmm. You get to do this. You get to clean up your toys. You get to clean up your room. You get to pick your clothes for tomorrow. Right? Like some kids don't. And, and it's funny because London even asked that the other day. She goes, Dad, if you stop working, where are we going to live? Why is that on her mind? Um, I don't know. Uh, something that I've been really learning. Do we need to have a chat? <laughs> well, no, no. It's it's so. So what it was is is so someone someone at school talked about some someone being homeless. Mm. Oh, okay. And and I had to sit there and I'm like, this is my six year old daughter. Doesn't matter what I say right now, she's not gonna get it, mm -hmm. right? However, at some point in time. I'm going to have to explain this to her. Like daddy works this hard. We, we work for this because we know what the other side's like right now. And please understand, I didn't come from homeless. I'm not claiming that, right? My dad, Steve, who's watching the show right now, who's in the comments right now, that man runs a lawn care business. He's worked his, his absolute body. He's put his body through the ringer to make sure he's provided for his family. Okay. But when I was in the military and when I was traveling, I got to see homelessness when I was in China and we left. It's so, mm, China, the great, the great, the great city of China, right? Shanghai, Beijing city. Oh, the forbidden Just city. Thank you. It is a city. It's called the forbidden city. You walk in, it's all flagged. When you walk in, when, when you're walking up, it's all military people in uniform. It's all hoopy hoorah. And then you walk out and there's people sitting on the side missing limbs, diseased, begging. It's all a show. It was, it was mind boggling to, to, to witness that and go, look at all this. You claim to be this great country and then right, right as soon as you step on the other side of the wall. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and you can tell the government's not trying to care for them. The way, the way the soldiers walked by these people, they're not trying, you know, so I know that happens in a lot of other places. I'm not saying it's only in China. Just that is the story that hopped out of my head. It's really important, though, they, I think, for all our kids to see us work hard and understand what we're working for. Because at the end of the day, they want mommy, daddy time. And to an extent that sometimes to continue to provide the life that we want to give them and have them get the things that they want, we have to work. Mm-hmm. But we've started, Grace has been doing this a lot lately. Why does daddy have to go do lawns today? Why does daddy have to be in the car all day today? Well, daddy does this and daddy works very hard so that on weekends we can go do whatever we want. We set those boundaries, but we also let her know, like, you're going to spend time with us. Mm. And this is when and this is why. And her whole thing is, is I want to go back on a vacation. Fantastic. Let's put it. When do you want to go? Today. Great. <laughs> Troy keeps saying every that. day. I was like, oh, I need a vacation, mom. I'm like, oh, <laughs> from what, buddy? Tell me, tell me all your troubles. <laughs> He's like, I'm just really tired. You know, like my legs kind of hurt. I played really hard today. <laughs> I'm really tired too, buddy. <laughs> but it's not because I went to a park today. Because <laughs> you don't sleep. <laughs> Like, I just want to go live in a hotel where they bring me food. I'm like, buddy, how are you going to pay for that? He goes, oh, I'll go do lawns with dad. Like, okay, well, you can't be at a hotel if you're going to go do lawns with dad. And he, like, he puts up some pretty big arguments, and Grace is always trying to negotiate. She's like, if we go on vacation this weekend, how many lawns does daddy have to do right now? Wow. <laughs> like, they're starting to correlate the work to dollars to vacation. That's awesome. That's yes. Yes. You, yes. You, oh, my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. I used to get really bad mom guilt over this. Why? Which is why I bring it up. Because like, am I working too much? Do they see me work too much? Am I not giving them enough of my time? All those types of questions in the back of my mind um, when they're pulling for attention. Mm -hmm. And I finally had to just, it's a mindset shift Mm -hmm. of, no, I'm not taking away from you. I'm doing this because this is what I'm called to do, but also to provide what you want. Mm -hmm. And I stopped having shame about saying that to her because I didn't grow up in a household hearing that. Mm. My parents worked very, very hard, and I understood that, but I also was told to go play by myself a lot because of it. So I grew up very lonely, and I don't want that for them. Correct. But watching them, having them watch me work hard doesn't mean that they're going to live that way. No. If anything, your kids are, your kids are, are I would almost say, more observant because they're understanding the grind. Right. Mm -hmm. They're understanding the discipline. They're understanding the sacrifice. And maybe they can't articulate it, Mm -hmm. but they are able to they are able to to be relative to it. So one of the things that my family does is where we've gotten to house flipping. Right. Mm -hmm. And my dad had has a rental property up in Gainesville. uh, That that the tenant just moved out and we go up there and uh, Lindsay, you actually wound up watching my youngest one. I did. Sydney. And I took London and Isla and I mean, they're, they're three and six. Right. And we walk up to the house. I'm like, girls, this is a dirty house. You're going to put on your gloves. You're going to put on your, your dirty house hat. And we're going to go clean this house. Isla hasn't figured it out yet, but London is under like, this is, this is a dirty house. Like people live like this. Mm-hmm. And Oh, that's why daddy goes for, Oh, that's why mommy keeps the house clean. Oh, like, like understand, like there, there's life lessons. If you, if your kids are ungrateful, next time I have a dirty house, we need to go clean. Give me your kids. I'll give them <laughs> back to you. Though they will be a lot more appreciative of, of, because they don't know it right right now. They, all they have is this one measure, mm-hmm. which is the household that you provide, which is a clean household, a safe household, a safe and clean environment. You take them out of that, that that's why I believe that like going on um, mission trips mm-hmm. to see how sometimes other kids live and to see how the families live, right? It's important because they get to go, oh, oh, I get it, right? You, you, I, remember, I, remember, I remember going out and building houses in New Orleans for the first time. Wow. Okay. Like, thank you, mom and dad, for all of the stuff that you did so we don't have to live like this, Right. Mm-hmm. And for some people, that's fine. And that, that's okay for them. That's not the lifestyle that I want to have. And that's not the lifestyle I want to provide for my kids. Well, and you have the opportunity to do better. So why would you not? Oh, man, Taylor, you're just on point today. Just dropping gold. It's the lack of sleep. I think it's, it's important, lack of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important, though, when you, to, to give them perspective. Because mm. that's what you're doing. You're giving them a perspective that they don't see all the time. You're talking about, well, this is the only house they've ever been in, or this is the only family they've ever been a part of. Well, broaden their perspective. Mm-hmm. Yes. If it's not like going and doing a mission trip because you don't have a place to get plugged in, one, get plugged into your community, get plugged into a church, get plugged into a family of choice that allows you to do those things. But at the same time, like there's so many resources and so many videos on YouTube and different places that we can find like, hey, you want to know what what other kids around the world live like? Like go show them a picture, go show them a video of India or, you know, like I just remember seeing these these videos of like just trash all over this all over and kids picking through it or like. Like, that was my wake-up call. I'm like, oh, my gosh. How how old were you? Older than my kids. Okay, so let's make sure that we we, 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 we set this foundation here. Don't show your kids things that they're not going to understand. That they're ready for. That that they're not emotionally ready for. Right. Ooh, there you go. You don't want to scare them. You want to give them a healthy perspective change. Correct. Yes. Now, with that, with that, understand that we're also teaching our kids not to judge. Yes. Right? Like you have to understand to love everybody. Yeah, there you go. So I'm not sitting here mm-hmm. judging other people who maybe live in a, in a more dire situation than I do. Well, what I'm saying is, is that sometimes when you are in your certain demographic, your kids need to be aware 
of the why behind it. And you sometimes you explaining the why you work and the why we keep our house clean. They it's just words. It's just words yeah. because that that's all they're used to. So you give you show them the other side. So so then they now have a new benchmark of oh that's why we clean up our toys. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. But again, like like Lindsay just said, you have to make sure that they are emotionally ready. Like Lindsay and, and Bo Taylor said, they're emotionally ready to have those conversations. Okay. And Theta, absolutely. If you have a kid that needs to be, I have to understand, I'll let you know next time I'm doing, we're, we're going to go clean a dirty house. <laughs> just, just come drop them off at my house. They'll mm-hmm. ride with me up there in the truck and they will get to work. And taking your kids to work with you is really honestly healthy for them. I can't remember what study it is, but there was a study done about the long-term effects and outcomes of a work ethic and a child who went to work with their parents and the they came out more with a better work ethic they showed up on time more for work they barely called out when they were sick they really were sick mm-hmm. and they had higher paying jobs learn teaching your kids work work a good and healthy work ethic i think is just as important as teaching them hygiene absolutely well i think it's important too because oh daddy's at work well they don't have any visual of what that looks like and what the demands are and what what does that mean he's at work? I mean, unless you're working at home, <laughs> like a lot of people are during the pandemic. But um, like my husband, he works in a warehouse. So, you know, oh, daddy's at work. Well, what does that mean? What's a warehouse? What's a, you know, what is that? Right. So give them, again, give them perspective. Help let them see. Well, and, and, and under, understand, again, when we say this, make sure that you're most, they're emotionally ready to absorb, right. right? Like, I can't have the conversation with my six-year-old right now about a homeless individual because she's not going to get it, right? Or my three-year-old isn't just not going to get it. Now, now let's, let's take this a step further. What we're not saying is take your kid to work and have them sit on an iPad. Right. What we're not saying mm. is take your kid to work and have them sit there and just not do anything. Like if I'm going to bring London into our office, guess what? She's going to be on camera with me. I'm going to have her use the keyboard and work and maybe within a design program. So she can start trying to figure things out. If Tristan goes with your husband to the warehouse, maybe it's on a slow day so he can walk with Dustin mm-hmm. and go, Oh, this is what a warehouse. Oh, I get it now. Right. I guarantee you at some point in time, Troy's going to go cut lawns with Gabe. There he does already he's does been doing that for a year now he likes it he's gotten healthier because of it he carries the bag of mulch uh, the bags he can uh, carry a bag of mulch kids strong he can carry sod pa- uh sod pieces yes um soil bags mulch bags wheelbarrows wow i'm impressed and i don't even know if i can carry all that. <laughs> <laughs> keep in mind each on the conservative end that's a 35 pound bag and he's been doing this since he was seven but he has he has adhd (laughs) so it's been really good for him to actually be able to get out there and do something plus he feels like he's being daddy's helper that affirms his spirit he very much is like i just want to help in any way Mm -hmm. not only does it is it helping him but it's also helping Gabe because yes. now Gabe is getting to be that leader in that really positive impact. And it's not somewhere where they're just, that is amazing. So, and I, Rosalie, I, I love, I love what you have here, not just kids, but maybe take your grandkids. If, if you, if you're a working parent, if you're a working grandparent, taking your grandkids to work with you. Right. Like, and, and let's take it a step further. What other family of choice do you have where you're like, Hey, can we come visit you at your work one day? Your Can- spouse. Your spouse. Wait, wait, hold on. Rewind. Go ahead. No, no, no. Your spouse. You're saying who else could visit you at work? Correct. But also with family of choice, like, like you want to know what? One day, maybe London and I need to come help Gabe and Troy. So London could be like, oh, this is what, it, what this was like so, to, mow a, to mow a yard and pull weeds some of my fondest memories are pulling weeds out of, um, what are they called? They're in front flower of the house. Beds? Yes, thank you. Flower yeah. beds, total brain fart that there. A, that was a tough word. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, Lindsay, words are hard. They are hard. <laughs> they are so hard. I actually stole that quote from somebody else. Because <laughs> oh, really? words like, are hard. <laughs> your face needs to be on a shirt that says that. <laughs> 
Where's Tom it Miss is like, hey, you take my kids with you. Does Thomas, he live on the East Coast? He, he, he lives way <laughs> far north. Brother, that's going to be expensive. If you want to, my man, yes. <sighs> yes, we can. So <laughs> We should make a weekend of it. You want to know what? The next house that, that, that we actually, because here we go, right? The next house that we actually go and need to to really clean. Now, I understand, I'm not, I'm not going to ask your kids to do construction. OK, when we went, when we went and we cleaned out what my dad's rental property, it was really just getting all the trash out of the house. OK, it, and so I'm not if you think that that would be beneficial for your kids to do something like that so they can understand, because I'm at London, looked at me and goes, Daddy, this is a dirty house. I don't think. And she looked at Amber and goes, Mommy, thank you for keeping our house clean. Like it clicked. That's amazing. Right. Like it clicked. And when you that click happens. Now she has more respect for her household. And for when she makes a mess, like, oh, I should probably clean this up. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> so if you, if you honestly think like that would be a benefit for your kid, okay, I will, I will make a post about it. Or if you let me know in the comments, I'll make sure that you get a message. And the next time it does, I'll, I'll let you know. Because that's, that's what I should be doing as a person who has an opportunity to do that and impact kids' lives in a positive way. I can see it now. Nick's going to drive a bus of kids to the next house to clean it up. <laughs> clean I love kids this. camp. You, see, I'm sorry? <laughs> clean kids camp. Clean kids camp. I love it. C3. There you go. You know? And what it is, what it is, your kids are going to come learn. <gasps> C. <laughs> Did you hear it? Not just C, but C. I love the pun. <laughs> I love it. I'm real punny. Before I forget, I did bring the pivot socks that you asked me to bring. Oh, Stop you it. got them. Wait a yep. second. They're little couches. Oh, hold them up. Hold them up. Hold them up. Oh, they're so cute. Those are fantastic. I have what my how you doing ones on yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> did you buy those pivot socks on Amazon or did you find them while you while shopping one day? It was like, I have to have these. Okay. So I'm not a big Walmart fan, but sometimes Walmart has really cool character things in their sock and mm -hmm. pajama section so they had a disney princess a disney villain and a whole bunch of friends and i love friends i was looking for socks for my girls and we left with socks for me <laughs> <laughs> that's a win that's, Tom, yeah, that's Tom, a thomas win. is like yep. i need those socks yep yes. walmart wally world they have several kinds so there's like multiple packs but um this one I'd rather be watching Friends and the How You Doing are my favorite. <laughs> my brother Robert uh, watched that episode where, where they, I guess one of the girls like pets Joey and they're like, oh, it's okay. You're pretty. <laughs> it, 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 and I say, I, I'm not a big Friends person. So I need like, am I thinking correctly? Am mm -hmm. I saying this correctly? Yes. Mm -hmm. and You're so pretty. Yeah. <laughs> and ever since then, he does that to all kinds of people. When they don't get it, he'll walk up and pretend like he's patting their head. It's okay. You're pretty. <laughs> there you go. Rachel says it to him. Oh, is that what happens? Mm -hmm. On the okay. couch. On the couch. The big <gasps> On the couch. orange couch. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. The coffee shop. Yes. Got it. Yep. The coffee shop. We need to open a coffee shop. Yes. Taylor's in. <laughs> I've wanted Let's to do, do that forever. Would it be franchise or go solo? Hmm. Hmm. See where the Lord takes it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what door is going to open? We don't know. We We're don't know. We're going to just walk Listen, through it. It's a passion. <laughs> coffee. Coffee <laughs> is a passion. How come you aren't serving friends? in the coffee shop then? Because we signed up for kids when that opened. <laughs> And I was like, we just signed up. I feel like it'd be really bad if we just bailed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess you can be, you know, honorable to your word or something like that. <laughs> Gabe, worked, Gabe worked in a food court for more years than he'd like. So he's kind of got like some trauma. Trauma. Yeah. As it relates to those some repressed memories. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, the, 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 the fun thing about the coffee, the coffee shop now, it's a button. Boop. It is. It's Very a button. simplified. And it's mm -hmm. funny because I've noticed like on the order thing, like you can't order like a cold Americano. Like it has to be a hot Americano. I think, I think Theta had, oh, Thomas, sorry. Thomas has a great idea. We need to make it the coffee and cookies bistro. Yes. 
hold with on. With the friend's couch. Oh, we could we we could, we could have oh the we could God. have the whole oh. setting inside the coffee shop. We could do it live with an audience. <gasps> and I oh have Rachel's gosh. aprons for all the waitresses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Let's build it. I love this idea. Let's build it. Let's do it. And we'll have to get some Coco's food in there. Ooh. Yes. And then Thomas, uh, you might have to move down here, brother, because you, you, you've, you've mm -hmm. talked about making, starting your own show called Coffee and Cannolis. No, oh. Cappuccino and Cappuccino Cannolis. and Cannolis. Man, do you read you the comments? You sold me at Cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> where are you? I don't know you. I don't know where you live. <laughs> do you put chocolate chips in your Cannolis? Ooh. I, I've had Thomas, a, where are you, brother? I need I've you in the comments right now. Chocolate chip cannoli. That's not authentic. Well, it was, <laughs> it was dang good. All the Italians are coming out in the comments. It was so yum. Cappuccino chocolate is good, though. Are you oh, ready? So here's, funny. Here, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna build this set, right? Uh huh. It's gonna have a real coffee bar in the back. Like it's gonna be real. And then yep. the next thing you know, all these shows nicknamed after a coffee. Uh, co co uh, cookie and coffees are going to be like cappuccino and cannolis. And then there's going to be another show. That's good. And all these shows are going to take place and we're going to have to start scheduling people on this set. I'm loving this idea. It's going to be an ever flow river of coffee. Hmm. What could you say with lattes? Oh lattes and that's a Valentine's day card. <coughs> what? What? An ever flowing of coffee. <laughs> My heart overflows of coffee for you. <gasps> yes. Oh, <laughs> My heart overflows of coffee for you. Do they make coffee bouquets? <laughs> I bet you could with okay, a K-cup or an espresso cup, like little like like thing that. Pods. Like that is a that's a very serious like. Let's do that because like right now, if you go to Kroger, you can get like the uh, the 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 can not candy cane. The candy bouquets. The candy bouquets. Yeah. The they're all like Snickers and Kit Kats and all mm -hmm. the. What am I thinking of? It's a candy bouquet. It's, yeah. It's, it's a candy, candy bouquet. It's really called a candy but bouquet. But now you do yeah. it just all coffee. Yes. We better hurry up and do it because someone's going to do it now that we've spoken about it. There's <laughs> no way I have a sea of coffee. <laughs> you yes. know, I don't, I don't have time to do it, but I'll, I'll tell you right now, if someone wants to pick that up, I will give you free sponsorship on this show. If someone, if someone decides to pick that up and go, you a want to know what? Bouquet? A coffee bouquet? A coffee bouquet. If you, if you decide to do a local coffee bouquet, <gasps> I wonder if Swirls could do it. I'm probably. If, if, if someone's like, I you want to know what? could do it. But with what time? I mean. Like, seriously, at the end of the day, the only reason why I would she's not. Got lots of time no, at night. <laughs> no. Amber needs her sleep. I need Amber to have her sleep, okay? <laughs> Like at the end, like I love you, Amber. <laughs> I I love this idea. Like local coffee bouquets, and then and then we could go around to some of the local coffee shops that are right around here, mm -hmm. and just hey, you're gonna we're gonna pitch in, pitch in. And we shoo. Nick does not have the time to do this. Wonder if you would do like. There's so many ideas running through my head of like, okay, how do we make this work? Coco's Kitchen could do this. Rosalie, Maybe. are you ready to retire? You gotta, you gotta ask her. <laughs> <laughs> we got all kinds of business ideas for you. <laughs> Taylor, we need, Taylor, we need every... An, we need a, a, a business leader on this. <laughs> every time. I, 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 I swear to you, like, almost every time you're in the comments or any time you and I get in the same room, things like this happen. I love thinking of business ideas. I want people to have their dreams, and entrepreneurship brings a lot of freedom that I don't a different type of freedom that I think is very underrated and not spoken about enough um everyone should do it I understand with an asterisk everybody not everybody wants to be a business owner I understand that um but there's a lot of people who have talent and want that freedom and have no idea how to run a business get with people who do mm -hmm. so then you can spend the rest of your life doing what you love and doing life the way you want to yeah. It doesn't mean you have to like run it all by yourself or even have the capital, but you can now get to spend your life doing what you're passionate about. Right. Rosalie, I like, you, like you're speaking to her. I'm reading the comments. Rosalie, seriously, like Rosalie, it, it, it's, it's so easy. Like owning a restaurant or, or doing something with what Rosalie does, like every month you could have a special like Rosalie, how, 
please don't put this in the comments. But what would be what would be the income that you would need to create off of that passion for you to walk away? Mm. Now, here's and hear me on this. I'm not just talking to Rosalie. I'm talking to anyone else out there that's thinking of being an entrepreneur. Coffee and just dropping all these different business ideas. too. Oh, my gosh. Coffee and curls for gym people. That is a brand. Wait, what? Coffee and curls. Dude. For people that like to go to the gym and, and have it be like a super blonde espresso shot. <gasps> Instead of your pre-workout, come to our coffee bar. And then <laughs> once you are ready and wired, we will go lift weights. <laughs> you would have the most lit gym in the entire world. Where half, is this happening? Half side right? coffee bar, half side gym. <laughs> like, 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 like for, forget all your, your green drinks. Coffee, get your workout. All right, you're done. And then you now. go to the bathroom before you leave, and everything's great. <laughs> it's a full circle. <laughs> Start to finish. I mean, we got you covered. <laughs> Is that the tagline? <laughs> I was going to say that there's some marketing oh, opportunities in that. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, you, oh, my goodness gracious. Did you know that it only takes $10,000 to franchise a Chick-fil-A? It's, 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 but, but it's the capital that you have to pre-qualify with first. Mm -hmm. You have to have the liquid capital and that's what stops people from, from, from franchising a Chick-fil-A. Is gotcha. the, the other capital, not the liquid capital or is it the liquid capital? You have to have enough liquid assets. So it liquid capital, but okay. yes, the franchise fee isn't that much. Mm -hmm. It's the liquid because I looked into this. It's the liquid capital. I've also, I've also looked into franchising a Starbucks. I've, lo I've looked into franchising a Scooters, Scooters Coffee. Mm -hmm. I know that's a big surprise, right? But no, I, so that's why I was asked, like, do you want to do you want to go like here we go, like, or do you want to franchise it out? Ultimately, we do want to franchise out our lawn care business. Good. That's awesome. That's I a have, good goal. Which, is, if you think about how many lawn care businesses don't come back year after year, it's fairly easy to buy them up. But but what you've done, though, and the reason why you would franchise is because you've worked out all the kinks. You understand the payment system. You understand all the nuances of it. Great. Give us our fee. We're going to give you all of these tools. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not just buying the name. You're buying Correct. the tools. Correct. And the that's systems, yep. mm -hmm. which all has value assigned to it. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's funny cause I look back at me being a farmer's agent and yes, being a captive agent was sometimes uh, a drag cause I, I only had one product to sell, but at that time, the customer service, the tools, the phone systems, the website, like everything was taken care of. That was nice. I can just go sell now. Mm -hmm. So a protein iced coffee. Thomas is asking protein iced coffee. Is that a? No, he's saying it is a thing. It's is a thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You can actually buy it in like your your grocery store. Mm -hmm. I'm. Is it Stoke or what Stock? If we... or they have that brand that I bought that one time. Stoic. Is it? I don't know. It's a S weird. Writing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's some. It's some other language. Yeah. They have a protein. <clears throat> Coffee, cold coffee. What if we started our own franchise and it started out as a coffee food truck? Yes. Yes. I know someone who can make all the syrups. Like, She's like, like seriously, like a coffee food truck. And what we would do is we'd partner with all the local gyms. Someone needs to be writing this down because this is gold that I'm dropping right now. You partner with all the gyms and in the morning you show up. And, and you, you, you would literally become a, a, a whole brand phenomenon. You go to different gyms you, you, and, and you sit there and you sell coffee before people go get their workouts. And you partner with them. And then what you do is you say, great, some of the revenue that we're going to generate from here, we're also going to, we're going to either donate to a, to a foundation of your choosing or somehow you partner with a 24 hour fitness or something like that. Because at the end of the day, 24 hour fitness does not want to deal with all of the extra legal of putting like a coffee bar in their facility. Mm. But if you have a food truck. I feel like that would also get, be a little hard to pass an inspection. You'd have to have kind of like a lifetime fitness set up. Right. Which pushes your membership rate up higher and might destroy your target demographic. There you go. Because not everyone is a lifetime fitness perfect prospect. So, but a food truck that would work. 
Oh my goodness. I would enjoy that. Like every day going to a different, oh, we could go live in all the different locations. Yeah. I would start the coffee and cookies road show. This is a thing. We need shirts. We need mugs. We need all the things. Let's do it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my goodness. Food trucks aren't that expensive either. How do you know that? Well, I've looked into this. <laughs> what was your food truck idea going to be? No, I, I really wanted a mobile coffee bar. Like, get the storefront and have a truck, too. Right. Really? Yes. Okay. They had a mobile... Our church had a mobile um, coffee shop at one point. They had it one time. They've never been back. And I'm like, this is amazing. That it's would... so easy. So here we go. Right. And, and let's, let's, let's take this a step further. You don't just have to do it with gyms. Imagine if you could like church events. Mommy mm -hmm. and me places. Oh. Go park outside a Prosper Playhouse. Or right. Those, what did I forget what they're called? Park outside there. I'm like, oh, your kid's having fun here. Caffeinate mom. <laughs> Caffeinate mom. <laughs> Play for kids. I see. I see those. Mom. I see those baggy eyes behind those sunglasses you're wearing. <laughs> And then, and then, and then we That's would me. nerdize it. Here's where we're going to nerdize it. I'm going to put a massive Wi-Fi antenna on it. So not only do we provide the coffee for you, but we're a mobile coffee shop. We're going to have the Wi-Fi for you <gasps> as well. Like, oh, little chairs and tables sitting out. That'd be fun. Yep. Love this idea. Yep. Hey, we should take it to Warren Park. I'm, I'm. Yep. I am seriously Brandscape. going to stop right now and just write down this <laughs> business plan because this would be fun. This oh. would be a lot of fun. It really would be. Yep. Okay. I think Rosalie, you're right. There's, you need to do this. Rosalie's meatballs and Italian sausage sandwiches. Rosalie, you want to start yeah. a food truck? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Like, yep. Do like, it. D please. Do it. <laughs> My taste buds are saying please. I'm not saying please for anyone else. My taste buds are saying please. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Taylor? Sorry. I, I kept interrupting you. That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday. And you want to know what? I want to be home when my girls get out of school today. Hey, -oh. that's a great goal. That's a great goal. We're mm -hmm. Nick, 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 Nick's going to strive for it. So I have my big three. I'm going to crush number three. We're going to get it done today. And I'm going to tell you, try to leave work a little early today. Go spend some time with your family. Do it. Invest in your kids. Invest in this next generation. Your kids are the next generation. Invest in your neighborhood's kids. Invest in the parents. Okay. But be that positive influence in those people's lives. And this weekend, get in church. I don't care what church you go to. Just get into church. Don't watch it online. Get in the room. Okay? It matters. We love you guys. We love you guys being here in the comments. Yes, we love you guys you. joining us. I mean, Taylor, Taylor, we're going to have to have you on the show more often. We didn't even get to her list of topics. We didn't. It was so good. Like, the direction she set us on before we even got onto the show was just so good. Just, it worked. It worked perfectly. <laughs> So um, thank you guys for being in the comments. Thank you guys for watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you're hearing this on our podcast, mm -hmm. come join us over here on YouTube and Facebook because that's, that's where we get to interact with our audience. Yep. We love you guys. We're going to pray positive over you guys. And we want you guys to pray positive over us. Make sure that you rise up and crush it. Bye, y'all. <laughs>